Welcome to Tapestry Feminine Collective Podcast, the show featuring presenters and artists from the 1111 Tapestry Feminine Collective Experience. Now, here's your host. Hello, everyone. Welcome back. I'm Arlia Hoffman, and this is Tapestry Feminine Collective Podcast. And we are now a week, almost a week uh, past the live event. And so I asked Jacqueline to come back and sit down and debrief what happened over the weekend, what energy she felt in the field, and what it's been like since then. Welcome, Jacqueline. Thank you. Hello, Arlia. It's one week out. So what time are we at? We're in the afternoon. It's one week out, truly, Mm -hmm. since all of this just landed in a very big way. Landed is the best word. I heard blue open, activated, but I would truly say landed within these women. Mm-hmm. You called it a huge portal before we came on the air. It was a huge portal in a number of ways. We knew in the creation stage, we understood I and the Council of Women, of which you are one, who together we were co creating this experience. And we all understood at the start, that what we were earthing, which is why I say landed, what we were earthing, birthing onto this physical plane and planet and current evolution was groundbreaking, was new, was literally a carrying to term of these strands of creation, of weaving together. The weave is the creation. If we think about a loom with those strands on it, initially it's a loom and they're strands. But when you bring the two together and begin to move them and bring them into connected form, something new is birthed and created. And that's how tapestry felt. It felt like we were pulling in cosmic strands, ancient feminine strands, divinity strands, uh, mother strands, crone, queen, creator, mystic, all of these different strands of being woman, ethnicities and cultures and practices and lineages and countries around the planet. Yes. Even from that one perspective I'm speaking of now, tapestry was a huge portal. I will pull that thread through. I spoke from the creation stage. I'll now speak from the actual experiential and active stage of this happening last weekend. It was beyond. And fully what I imagined, bringing beautiful, brilliant women together. And as I said, these lineages of medicine and magic and divinity and creation and just being a woman, as I sat in this Space of facilitating 18 women over three days coming on virtually and speaking their medicine. Some who this was an edge, they've never done anything like this. Others who have established practice, but it's evolving and it's not yet clear what their own body of work artistry, creation is asking of them. I would, for the next edge, because 
we as a planet and bringing that down to the micro, we as women are in major evolution. And we talked a lot through the weekend in some very powerful, very transformative ways about the internal structure, paradigm, the way we've inherited and lived in a world that defines woman and feminine within this huge portal was the knowing that is being torn down Mm -hmm. and tapestry is foundational in what we are building and creating and becoming in its place because something very different is needed from us as women Mm -hmm. than our mothers and our grandmothers or even our daughters We are in our time and going forward, we are the foremothers. Mm -hmm. And that was part of this huge portal. And the final piece, and I know we'll talk more about these, is witnessing the impact on the women who were truly present before, during, and now after profound Mm -hmm. let's talk about yeah the energies you experienced as it was happening and the feedback Mm -hmm. from the women in that in that container before i get to the feedback as it was happening even myself my my creative direction was calling in these women getting things organized behind the scenes staying in beautiful communication that was alive consistently from conception to birth with the women involved And for myself, I was the voice of opening ceremony and closing ceremony. Opening ceremony in my time zone, Friday, 12 o'clock noon. Closing ceremony, Sunday, 7 p.m. in the evening. And I'm specifically mentioning the times because of what I'm about to say. For me, As I watch myself on video in each of those ceremonies from beginning to end, I am a different woman. I watched and I'm speaking about myself because this speaks to what lives in this portal. I watched myself very connected, very present very much right here in the energy I knew was right for opening that portal. And then I watched myself in the closing of that live portal in a very different relationship to what is needed of women, what we are being called to, where the glitches are in the field, And ultimately, my ability to hold the fullness of my calling, my mission, my stewardship, which ultimately are driven by my relationship to Jacqueline as a woman and the power that fuels that. Mm -hmm. Meaning the power of how I love and tend to this woman, how I answer the call and how I 
speak, choose to speak that through in its fullness. What I saw witnessing the weekend in the women who chose to be present is that it is a choice. And it requires that we not just sit back and let it wash over us, which is lovely. And there are times for that. But this time now that we are in as women requires we pick up the ownership of choosing how we will move in the world, how we will answer the calling of our gifts, how we will speak for what we feel, what we desire, what our medicine is, what our wisdom is, the power of our stories. And I also watched in the field how there's a lot of talk about this but it's foreign in her system Mm -hmm. to actually exercise, not just speaking. It's not just about your voice is speaking. Your voice is the essence of you Mm -hmm. coming into physical reality. If it just stays inside of you and has no expression, we have no way of knowing. There is so much more space for us as women to bring in who we are. And in the field, I've written about this since the weekend. What we have understood as receiving can be complacency can be disconnect, can be gluttony, where we're just feeding on what is being offered and the circuit of energy within us, that toroidal field, if we think about that, our own internal circuit of energy is just being fed, fed. We're human beings. We eat food. It comes back out. And so that's what I see is the current evolutionary edge for women is how, yes, you're being nourished. What comes next? You're fed, you're full, you're nourished. Are there channels for that to then come into the world from and through you? That's where we need to connect. And I sense, yes, that's internal. Yes, there are places where, quote, we need to do our work. But this isn't about processing. It's about choosing and responding to what is being awakened, to what is being asked of us in the physical world. It's not enough to just get up in the mystical realm and do our spiritual work. We are women with flesh and bones and blood and voices and bodies. So gifted to have impact in the world by being ourselves, by letting that come out. I see we must choose it because the evolution of our planet truly, how life is for our granddaughters Mm -hmm. and our great granddaughters and what we are leaving to them. And I don't just mean climate change or overpopulation or the usual things. What do you want for her? If you could create it right now and know that your great-granddaughter 
would have this experience, this, whatever you imagine, and know is possible. Sustainability, sharing our resources, coming into community, creating through our signature, making art, speaking wisdom, telling the stories. And in some cases, just saying, thank you. Some of it is very simple. And some of it has become a lost art that we must now claim as part of being woman and feminine on this planet. That's a piece of what I saw. <laughs> and as you're speaking, I'm thinking of, yeah, live, as you said, living it out. Otherwise it dies with you. Yes. Yes. And in my own personal experience as woman, and I believe this, I do believe this lives in every woman, every feminine being, which is, we may not all be connected to it. I understand that. There's grief in it. And there's some level of, there can be a level of agony. In being fem a feminine, in a feminine. In body. not having it come through and mm -hmm. dying with it inside us. Mm -hmm. Because here's another thing I understand on a personal level, and I see in the field. There's a lot of talk about polarity. There are many teachers on relationship, on masculine energy. I myself, over the last several years, how to heal your masculine, how to raise your masculine, how to have a relationship with the masculine, all these things. For myself, my life experience and spiritual path have been rich with craving, connection, intimacy, co-creation with God and with my partner. Those are real. What I understand now that I didn't probably even a week ago Those are real cravings, but sometimes I misunderstood experiences as being that craving when truly what I wanted was community and connection with women. And it's a very different longing I believe it's a longing that is so deeply embedded in our feminine system that through lifetimes and generations, it's become, it's like the pee under the mattress. Mm -hmm. And we, I certainly have believed, oh, it's this mattress. My relationship with my husband, it's the intimacy. And yes, those have been true. As I've worked deeper into myself and those places in my life have transformed, still have the craving, have the relationship with God, have the relationship with my partner. I still have the craving for community and practice being ceremony, medicine, wisdom, communication, communion, creation with women and at its root is with Jacqueline. And it will not be enough in the larger scope of my life to simply have it with God, partner, and Jacqueline. Yes, it's enough 
I'm not talking about that place. But in where we are truly moving, as well as the ancient feminine we come from, women need women. We multiply even more with the understanding, relationship with God, relationship with partner, if we are in partnership. I'm not discounting those. I'm integrating those. But women with women, when women come together for a period of time, it is a proven scientific biological reality. We bleed together. If women come together and bleed together without us doing anything, we don't just decide, okay, let my body know when you're bleeding, I bleed. I'm in charge of that. No. It just happens in the feminine system and community and the structure by which we are designed as women. We'll be right back. The Women's Agency is proud to be an Indigo sponsor of Tapestry Feminine Collective and this podcast. The Women's Agency is a full-service coaching and podcasting firm devoted to amplifying your work in the world because your voice matters. And if we have that holy power to naturally, with no effort, just like breathing, think our energies together because I'm not going to get into the blood mysteries, but a woman's blood, incredibly nourishing, highly potent, anoints the earth. So if we have the power, and I don't mean power, power of bleeding together, imagine what is possible when we choose to be, commune, create, express, and share together in service to the honoring and the evolution and the consciousness and the love of our planet. What then? is available to us. And don't we want it? Do you? That that inquiry, do you want it, woman, comes from God, Father, and Earth, Mother. Do you want it? By the very nature of the inquiry, it requires response, choosing, desiring, and speaking what is desired, as well as opening and receiving it. And receiving isn't, as I said, yeah, oh yeah, I want it. Give it to me. Just give it to me. Receiving is, I am here, I am present with all I am. And I receive with the understanding I am a steward. Being a steward also requires engagement. I talked a lot. I was thinking as you were speaking that um, about how the, the power of women together and how necessary it is and that deep longing that 
community meets that um, my experiences with women's circles, Mm -hmm. they don't always know that's what they're missing. Like that's, it's it's a deep awareness that mm, the, the longing hasn't been stripped from us, but our experience we have no context for it in our experience. So not only do we not understand that's what we're looking for, but we also don't trust it because of our cultural overlays. And so that's the work is to, is to and that's what tapestry, I saw tapestry doing was becoming that beacon of here's what's possible Here's what it looks like for women in their power to stand together and weave their magic together and build community. And yes. I would say even for those of us who were present in the field, and as you said, knew and didn't know what, what was going to happen, nonetheless, to experience that became, I, beyond words, that to actually see it happening Mm-hmm. all around us with our participation with our it we we weren't just consuming it we were were an integral we were a, a thread in the tapestry to weave that together it's so extraordinary mm-hmm. that I, I think that's the part of the Part of the portal of it is that we, it's new. It's not new, but it's very new. It, it's, these current systems have not experienced that as we are incarnated in that way. So when we do actually experience this incredible communal power, mm. um, it's thrown all of us a bit for a loop. <laughs> yes. Yes. I am a week out and my own orientation for next steps has needed time to digest and to breathe all of this, I like what you said, communal power Mm -hmm. of women intentionally gathering to share and witness and receive the medicine, the wisdom, the connection, the remembrance It's foreign enough that it asks of us the spaciousness for digestion and integration Mm -hmm. to allow it to settle. We, many, most women I encounter, the natural unspoken understanding we have of how we connect is why is life hard for you? Where are you suffering? What are your wounds? What's the trauma you're going under? Where are you struggling? All part of who we are and There's an evolved conversation to be shared. How's your heart today? What are you creating? How may I witness you? What would you like to share with me? Here's how I'm experiencing. It's very naked to engage another woman in this way because 
certainly it's true for me. I feel like it's true for the many of the clients I've worked with, friends I've encountered, women I've collaborated with, that somewhere we hit that plateau, which says, be careful. Mm -hmm. She's more beautiful. She's more liked. She has a little more power than you. You got to inflate yourself to be more if you're going to stand beside her. And so we begin to experience ourselves out here mm -hmm. instead of right here at the level of heart, at the level of that's who I am today. And I want to know who you are. And if that makes me feel a certain way, I can still receive you. I believe tapestry, my body of work, your body of work, the women who are weaving into this energetic understand we're creating something new. We're creating honoring and love and side by side and witnessing and even more than just that, I witness you, I see you, I honor you. How do we create together? How do we understand, share, and weave into the world the wealth of resource we have, not just individually, but together? That the weekend of all these women, the wealth of resource is so immense. I don't know one woman who could drink it all in, mm -hmm. in one weekend. And we knew that going in. We didn't create it for, whoo, consume all of this and you'll be great. We understood this is a buffet and it remains a buffet. It's still available. We haven't shifted into the next expression. And so for any woman who is called to what we're speaking about, that buffet is still laid out for you. You can get a little bit of everything or you can just pick your favorites and start there. We have beautiful appetizers of many kinds. We have delicious dinner course, delectable plates of nourishment. And we have the most decadent desserts that will light up your system. Because this is woman. We're all that, especially when we are offering through collective energy, community, because it's true it takes a village. If you asked me 10 years ago, I would have said, I think that is a load of crap. <laughs> but we become wiser with age and seasoning and experience. And I'll tell you today, I need women in my world in a number of different ways and not through a codependence I have already lived. I need that woman because she knows how to do that and she has a power and I wanna be in proximity to that. So maybe I get some. No. The evolved expression of that is I 
want to create my art, my wisdom, express my divinity, my service, my love. And I want to stand next to that woman while I'm doing it and she's doing it because I can feel when we stand together, it's no longer even two. The two become in the energy field. Mm -hmm. And it requires us to be able to stand in our own power and our own brilliance and beauty and then recognize the brilliance and beauty of the woman standing next to us. Yes. Yeah codependence that's that's a huge piece of that we're moving beyond that and yeah i'll come back to i i think i would say generally the women in that field could feel and understand that Mm -hmm. but then to actually experience what it is like when we do stand next to each other and share our beauty it was a diamond we couldn't even actually look at it's so bright we couldn't actually see it i felt that as you were speaking it it's blinding and that's just us in the space like literally if you look at the full planet this space even though to us it's enormous yeah in perspective of the whole planet it's small and yet we were blinded it's not the old imprint of codependence. You approve of me, so I feel good as a woman. It's interdependence. That's the weave. Look at it. Not that I have pretty hands, but that's the thing. That's the weave. This is very different than this hooked in. Mm -hmm. And it's very different than this. These come together and create this beautiful tapestry of gorgeous threads. I feel like we we brought in, we imported the finest silk, the most luxurious handcrafted textiles and fabrics. And we didn't even weave them together. They entered the field and began Mm -hmm. the rhythmic motion of finding connectivity. Yes, we were blinded. The enormous brilliance and i'm talking not brain brilliance i'm talking arlia said something i think about a diamond and if not that's what i felt in myself the most gorgeous diamond in its brilliance if you have light on it if you put it in the sun the way that it shines we knew that existed. But of course, we are women, we understand you can know the most beautiful, passionate, alive, love making with your man is possible. It's a whole different world. When you feel his breath, and the caress of his fingertips, and the grip of his hands, and the stroke of his love, and the heat of his mouth when he kisses you or puts it on your skin and the full, I don't know, I have so many yummy words of him inside of you. It's very different than how you might imagine it. Mm -hmm. To realize 
that experience in the body is a different sensation, a different dimension of reality. And when we come together in that and it's incredibly alive and impassioned and each partner is very present in it, it changes you. That depth of lovemaking has a profound impact on your psyche, on your body, on your soul, on your feminine energy. That is what I see now in the field of the women who were present. Is this profound impact that I would say we're in it. Mm-hmm. And still integrating. And so I in no way will sit here and say, and this is the outcome. Because tapestry is new. And we are living and creating from and experiencing the newness. It's big. It is. So I don't know exactly what's next because we're going to let it unfold. Um, But where, how can people just stay connected with how it builds and grows? Two, Two options. Choose what you love or both. One, if you're a Facebook person. We have a Facebook group. It's simply called Tapestry Feminine Collective. At present, there are over 200 women there. We are intentionally creating a community. We intend in 2024 to expand that to offer a network of resources. And the other way you can stay connected Facebook or not, is go to our website, tapestryfemininecollective.com, and subscribe to our mailing list. There's a, a link to do so right on the landing, on the home page. When you go to our website, that first page, scroll down, subscribe. We will keep you aware. We will not, can't think of the word that I want, but we won't just keep sending you all kinds of emails. We will simply keep you aware. And in the meantime, as part of this experience, we visioned and created an artist boutique. Mm -hmm. And I can't stop looking at it. And we have new artists who are on a wait list to become part of that boutique. We're going to continue the boutique indefinitely at present. So visit our boutique. There's spoken medicine. There's a woman who's a blacksmith and creates beautiful jewelry. She talked about how she selects the crystals. It's gorgeous. There's a woman from Mexico who creates these beautiful nichos. There are handcrafted, luxurious soaps made just for tapestry. There's canvas art. There's a piece called tapestry. Mm -hmm. I don't have it right here next to me, but there's the tapestry candle. And I'll tell you, I lit the candle in opening ceremony and the It's beautiful to see, but what I could not share virtually is the fragrance. And it filled not just my office space, but my entire home, even when it wasn't burning. And every time that fragrance touched my senses, I felt the energetic signature of what we're doing. That's alchemy. Mm -hmm. And it reminds my system and activates All of, they talk about the oxytocin when a mama nurses her baby, the oxytocin is created. That tapestry candle creates 
a mystery, feminine connection, oxytocin. Mm. So there are many ways you can dance with this portal. And my invitation to you, wherever you begin, continue to move in more deeply. Mm -hmm. Meet the edge, know a new one is being formed and continue meeting your next edge. That's your magic. And we're all creating it together in the Facebook group. We are. We are. And birthing new as we go. And we don't yet know what all that, which babies are coming in 2024. (laughs) I can't wait. I can't either. I can't either. Tapestry. Yeah, go ahead. Just reminds me that we have to continually stay open and flexible and curious and allow it to move. Yes. Tapestry taught me I don't want to say reminded me, like I certainly have known in my own relationship to being woman that we have cycles but tapestry opened a deeper relationship and wisdom with not just the cycles of a woman and when she bleeds and what the moon is doing yes yes it brought me back to that during the creation and the communion with these women But tapestry also taught me my own creative cycle and to trust it where previously, because the vision wasn't so clear and my devotion wasn't as committed, I would be in and then My creative cycle would shift. I didn't know that's what's happening. So I would get back out because Mm -hmm. this must not be right. And Tapestry stayed right here and said, woman, get in. Don't leave. Don't leave. Mm -hmm. And don't leave means don't abandon yourself. Exactly. And so this energetic of Tapestry She stayed beside me, Mm. which I also believe, no, is new to the feminine system. Mm -hmm. Stay right here. And being in the presence of women who live and understand and practice this doesn't automatically give you that ability, but what it does do is it fuels your desire for it. And it reveals to you where your channels are ready to be opened to more. Thank you for sharing. Thank you for tapestry. Thank you for showing up. Mm. Thank you for staying the course. Mm. You just never know the impact you have until you show up. And even then, I'm sure there's so much more I can't see from here. And Tapestry has been and is my pleasure and my lover and my honor and my devotion and my service and my yes and my communion and expression and invitation to every woman who craves this. Come on. 
choose. My door is open. And I have beautiful space <laughs> yes, you do. waiting for you. So come on. Thank you, Jen. Thank you, Arlia. <laughs> Thank you. I, I do want to say before we go on that note, we have talked about this and you have walked beside me in the creation of tapestry from before conception. <laughs> you jumped in as our Indigo sponsor, our podcast producer, our behind the scenes technical and um, media wizard. And you presented and you showed up. And you welcomed all of these women, even as your woman arrived and said, okay, let's go. And so I honor and thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It's been mm. my pleasure. Mm. My deep pleasure. With more to come. Absolutely. Thank you for being here with us. Um, this does it for us today, but we will be back. And um, you can find all our podcasts on the website and wherever you find your podcasts. And do visit tapestryfemininecollective.com. In addition to the podcast is the artist boutique and the blog and a lot of beautiful things there. All right. So we will see you here again next time on the Tapestry Feminine Collective. Thank you for joining us on Tapestry Feminine Collective Podcast. To learn more, visit tapestryfemininecollective.com.